people would say, are you in Australia? You sound different. And I said, well, I am in Utah. I said, now I lost my accent. It's not like home. It's not like US. It's not like Utah. Some people are even placing it in Australia, which is totally crazy. So um, I had John help me preserve the tone, my British tone, in the manner that I thought it was when I left that home. Because my country was once a British colony. And I figured he would know um, as closely as possible what it is I was trying to say more than anybody else around me. Because it is a, it is a different tone. Uh, most people who have read the book ask me, why is it that it does not, it does not follow my life doesn't follow a specific border. I start with a poem. And it's not chronological because I was trying to share something that's very personal to me, the intrusive thoughts. I didn't know the time that I was writing the poem because I was later diagnosed with PTSD. And I said, why is it that when I tell a story, it's not like I, will, I left home, I, went, I left home, I came to Dermary. I will have moments where I'm transported into different, to different places. I jump in my car, and when I'm in my car, I see the orange bag. It reminds me of back home when I was a little school girl, when I had an orange uh, leather case to carry my books in. And during that time, I will travel from my back place back home, my manhood, walk to school, and then I'll sit in the classroom. As I sit in the classroom, I'm sitting in my car here. So, and then I start driving again. This is how this book goes. Most people who read it expect me to go from Kearns or Murray and come downtown and say where the road is going, but that's, that's not what's happening here. It's mostly a depiction of my mental frustration, and that's usually not a linear matter. <laughs> so, you find a poem in here, you'll find a fairy tale. You'll hear a story about the courthouse. You'll hear about wild plants in Africa. And you think, is she crazy? Well, by the criteria here in Utah, yes, she is. But this is what the book is all about. So I'm going to read it to you, The Prelude, which is a poem. I called it The Elephant Man. I chose to call it The Elephant Man because when I was reading English literature, I learned about how the people at the time used to profit out of people in difficult circumstances. I don't know that's, that there's any story in, more, in, in human history that has impacted me and that of the elephant man, about how we as members of the society can take advantage of people who are already in compromised situations. So that is why I call this poem the elephant man. The elephant man. I am not elephant man, only I came in black and white from a little colony. Mine is not scabies or rabies or packs of lies. It is human life, a concoction of black, of black, of white matter. Um, what I was talking about here is that the black and white and colonies, I meant it to have like different meanings at different levels. You can take it to be an infection if you like microscopes and colonies. If you want to think about my country as being a British colony dominated by the white, then you will see those colors there. And it becomes an infection because then, there at the time, people just grabbed onto everything regardless of whether or not it was destructive just because it was coming from somewhere else. Mm. Mine is not scabies or rabies or packs of lies. It is human bite, a concoction of black or white men. One of the best ways we fight back home, because I grew up in very dangerous neighborhoods, the way you learn to protect yourself is to learn how to fight. That's something that I do the most. You either learn how to fight or you learn how to run. Well, in the US, I think I use more the latter. If I have to run, I will run to the <laughs> because I'm going to stand there and fight anything physically. So most girls would bite. And when you bite somebody, that usually create, becomes an infection. And because there's no hospital services, that is a way to kill a person. I felt like that is what had been done to me here. Here I am desperate, faced insane, desperate situations that I fled from Africa, where if you're bitten, 
It is really just a death. There's no way to escape it. I have been stung in the shaft between statesmen and federal. There is no remedy for comedy. I meant that to have sexual connotations because I was really angry and yet I couldn't come out and say anything sexual here. That's why I use the term shaft. And um, back home again when people say somebody has been stung, they are referring to gonorrhea or syphilis. And there's no cure for that at the time where I was writing about this, you know, at the time of the elephant man, we don't have conventional medicine. So if you have gonorrhea or syphilis, you know, you're facing a difficult time. And even though I consider myself a woman, in this poem here where I said I've been stung, in this particular section, I see myself as a helpless man. But it doesn't matter even if you're a man, you know. You've been stung in the shaft. You cannot go and be intimate with other women <laughs> because, you know. So, and, um, and I said there's no remedy for comedy because, again, that's again um, the interplay that I was doing between different cultures in that. Back home, men prove their masculinity about how many women they can sleep with. It doesn't matter whether it's through rape, any kind of rape. They have what they call corrective rape for people who are either lesbian or who don't conform to certain uh, ways that society is supposed to. Women are punished at home, sec you know, through sexual assault. Before I got married, I was sent before a council of women, and they said, "Well, your job is to make yourself available to your future husband, and it's always good. It doesn't matter what he's doing. It doesn't matter whether you're ill or anything. That is the council, and you can't provoke society by going." So what I was saying here when I said there's no remedy for comedy is that here is the guy who's supposed to be assaulting women with his body parts, but he can't do it because he's been stuck in the shaft. So um, only the parody you see in the malady, dark, skinny, petite. Well, I was just quoting there from a phrase that uh, Paul Rowley used in the Salt Lake Tribune, that it is, and this is a sickness. And I put petite in quotation marks because I have a totally different conception for me of you know how people look skinny and petite. For me, it's just, it just it represents illness. I come from a culture where you are healthy when you have something on your bones. That is how wealth is measured and pros prosperity. So if you're skinny, we have to start asking questions. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought I should give that uh, bit of a. <laughs>